Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at how you can configure the flight plan manually in the Douglas DC-6. The Douglas DC-6 has a Garmin GNS430 uh, which um, might be known if you already flew uh, other airplanes in Flight Simulator. So the flight will go from Helsinki Vanta to Turku and we're not gonna fly the real flight but we're just gonna program the flight in or a navigation system and to do that what we need to do is we need to go to the flight plan and that can be done by pressing the FPL button once you're in the FPL uh, menu you can see the active flight plan and as you can see it's currently empty to fill the flight plan you need to push the button here which will make the cursor blink and then if we if you look really closely you can uh, move the buttons and you can either do that using the scroll button or you can uh, simply press your mouse cursor and then it will also uh, move so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first add the airport itself which is in this case Echo Foxtrot Hotel Kilo so Echo Foxtrot oh I said Foxtrot Foxtrot then we're going to use the large knob right on the to move to the second position hotel and then the last one was kilo and you'll see it almost directly recognize it Vanta Helsinki and then it will show the uh, coordinates and if we're happy we are pressing enter and that will add it to a flight plan then using the large knob we will move one position down and we will define the next waypoint and some of you might ask okay how did he figure out those waypoints well simply use onlineflightplanner.org of one of the online flight planners and plan the flight using those tools then note down the navigation beacons and the intersections which you need to follow and then program them manually in uh, flight simulator 2020 right some of them for example simbrief have the option to integrate within flight simulator uh, but this uh, DC-6 doesn't have that option uh, so we need to do it between brackets the hard way as you can see it's not really hard right so we're gonna add uh, the next one which is uh, IDOVO so once we're happy with it we press enter again and we continue with the next one and the next one is uh, Ekupsa so we're gonna scroll again and you can again you can either press the mouse button or you can simply use the scroll wheel whatever you prefer next one oh. use a large one and then we're gonna move to the x from x-ray set the x from x-ray guys come on on back you from uniform and then the P from Papa no oh, it was already there and the A from Alpha is already there so we're gonna hit enter and then we're gonna press next once we've done that again, we're going to do the same exercise and then we're going to add Turku, which is the uh, destination airport. Turku. One to the right. I'm pretty sure it was Turku. Oh, sorry. My bad. So I did the wrong signal. So it's Echo Foxtrot. I 
and um, Tango uniform. Right, so keep in mind that all the airports are always starting with a uh, country code uh, and then followed by uh, a specific location in that country. So here you can see EFTU is Turku Airport. EF is stands for Finland, right? Uh, for example, if you fly in uh, the Netherlands, it's Echo Hotel, and there are several other ones which are in place. So now we added our fly plan. If we would open the VFR map by pressing the V from Victor, you will be able to see, okay, hey, this is our flight. But as you can already see, it now has set a flight directly from the heart of the airport. And maybe we want to set it to a specific runway. Well, you can also do that. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, inside the menu options, you have a few options. And one of them is to, uh, for example, change the active lag, inverse the flight plan, delete the flight plan. So before going to that, I will first show you how to Come on, guys. Select the departure. Because the select the departure allows us to uh, add a standard instrumental departure. So if we had hit this option and, and press enter, then you will see that you will get a departure being displayed here. In this case, uh, Alpha Delta India Victor 3 November and that's applicable when we're using runway 22R and you can see runway 22R, oh, let me have a look, where is it, 22R is here. So let's assume that that's the runway, uh, always first contact I would say uh, contact ATC and figure out if that's the runway to use, right, you can mostly find it by contacting ATIS because ATIS will inform you which is the actual runway. For now, we assume that it's this one. Uh, what are the options then? Well, if you uh, use the same button again, you will be able to, I would say, change the departure route. And those departures can be found on different maps, right? I posted a video earlier about that, how to uh, figure out um, which, I'd say, departure you should use. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna select uh, this one. Uh, I'm just do it. I would say guessing, right? I'm not sure if it's the correct one, but let's see what happens. Then we're gonna say okay, and where there's no transition, and that's fine for us. Runway four left. Well, that's not what we really wanted, my friends. And you can see that uh, in some cases you need to figure out, hey, which is the correct one. So let's let's go back to uh, 8 of 3 on November, and then see, okay, hey, do we have another runway? No, in this case, this. Uh, SID specifically be belongs to runway 22 right so once we're happy with that we're gonna move the button to load and then hit enter as soon as you've done that you will see that the flight plan will change because what it now does it will add the departure the SID before the route right so if we would scroll down to or flight map you will see that the end route that are the waypoints for intersections which we're gonna follow after we completed the SID route and if we zoom into the VFR map you will see that the route has not changed right we're now flying uh, via uh, the user waypoint then Hoto Kilo 461 Hoto Kilo 935 and then eventually we are ending up at a uh, Adivo, which is the last uh, waypoint or intersection of the SID, and then we will follow our normal, between brackets, normal uh, flight plan, which is following Exupu. The same thing can be done uh, with the arrival. So you can hit menu again, uh, and then you can go to select an approach, hit enter, and then select an approach. In this case, if we would uh, select the, or use the button, we can see that there are multiple approaches, right? There are VOR approaches for runway 8 and 26. There's ILS for only runway 26, uh, Yankee and Zulu. And we've got the air navs. So be aware of that. 
uh, and you can use a uh, select button to scroll to them and you need to use the large knob so let's assume that it's uh, eyeless or let, no, let's use VOR26 once we're happy with that we press enter and here we've got the um, the trends right so where are we gonna pick up that point and this information is in most cases provided by the ATC so once you're coming close to an airport it will say hey you need to select the transition right that's where the word trans stands for in th that case we'll say transition to uh, Ampom and use approach for VOR 26 so if you're airborne you can directly say activate in that case it will load it to the flight plan and will directly activate it but in this case we only want to load it because I'm using it as a demo purpose to sh see to show you how it really works right so can press load and then if we would go closer to the airport we can see that instead of going straight from Exupu to F2 we're now gonna make a diversion and following the uh, star route right which is the uh, terminal approach route so if we go to the list again you will see that the approach is now being added after F2 uh, that's always the point it will always set uh, keep the I would say the uh, destination airport is lost and then it will uh, oh sorry and then it will uh, contain or have the uh, the flight plan um, sorry let me rephrase so it will always have the uh, the destination airport as last one but will pick up automatically the approach uh, once it's necessary to do that so some things which we didn't discuss yet right the invert flight plan what can you do with it well you can invert the flight plan so you can simply turn it around the delete one is pretty easy it simply deletes the flight plan but you also see that we've got the activate lag so let me show you how that works uh, for that we need to uh, leave the menu and uh, uh, go to one of the other beacons so let's assume that we're using uh, Hoto Kilo uh, 261 we're gonna press enter and then we can say menu and then say activate lag right it asks us for confirmation now let me show you what happens so if we're here as you can see you see that the active lag is shown in pink now keep an eye on it you see that now it activates this one as the active lag so that's how you can use it and where can you use it for for example if you made some kind of diversion and you want to uh, continue flying from uh, another waypoint or another uh, beacon or intersection then you can manually adjust the active uh, flight lag or active lag so what are other options as mentioned already you can delete it uh, or you can delete the flight plan uh, remove the approach and remove the departure right if you're not happy with the approach simply hit go to remove approach hit enter and then it will be removed if we're unhappy with the approach we can do the same so we're gonna hit enter there and then it should be uh, gone and we can also do the same thing for departure right now that's being cleaned up and as you can see it's cleaning up the action the not the action plan the flight plan massively um, are there other options uh, yes of course there are uh, there is a set direct course too and the set direct course too allows you to set a direct course to either a waypoint or airport uh, and then it will simply get rid of the previous action or previous action plan previous flight plan and then will directly set the uh, course to that one so how to do it well we can simply for example let's say uh, we're gonna go to uh, F2 directly right we don't want to visit all the other waypoints and then we're gonna hit enter 
and that will ask us do you want to activate yes activate and now it directly set a flight from uh, Helsinki to F2 and if you would go to the uh, flight plan you will only see one of them right and it also brings us back to this part this part shows you the uh, let's say current location and then the destination uh, in this case there's it's an airport but it could also be a beacon it will give you some more information about what's the distance um, and the bearing which you need to keep in mind right the direction and the nice thing is if you lose, use the large knob which is this one you can scroll to different views right you can use the VFR map but be aware that the GNS for 30 also has a built-in map and you can increase or decrease the uh, zoom using the buttons here And this is the last one, right? <coughs> you can also use uh, this view, for example. It depends on what you prefer to use. Um, other options, which we didn't discuss, are nearest. Nearest is the shows the nearest airports, which are very close to you, right? So that's that's cool. You can use it. Uh, be aware of that. That you can use it for different methods. Um, waypoints is exactly the same the waypoints option allows you to figure out information about the waypoint or at from an airport so what's the location does it have I would say view the approach the radar the airspace so it allows you to give or to get a lot of information so let's do that uh, what is it Echo, oh, one back, Foxtrot. Come on, Foxtrot, Tango. You can then see, okay, facility name Turku, uh, city name is also Turku. This is the uh, position. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, the un approach unknown, and there's also no information about this. Airspace is zero. Uh, for some airports, that has been populated. For other ones, it hasn't been populated, so be aware of that. Uh, this one, the, pro the procedures button, is exactly the same as the menu option. So it contains the same option to set the approach arrival and departure so we'll not go to it anymore uh, flight plan we discussed it uh, or other options i think we discussed most of them uh, as we speak com setup navigation so you can see navigation has multiple options here to go into the different views and then you can use the large knob again to move to show the show the waypoints and uh, airspace also right so you can see that the large knob has multiple options it will give you the option to go to the nearest the waypoint information the navigation and the aux and once you're in there you will see additional options here in this case uh, nearest airspace nearest vr nearest ndb nearest intersection or nearest airport and that's where you use the small knob for so large knob for the large for the large options i would almost say but for the main options and a small knob to navigate between the different screens so this is where this video ends uh we discussed about how to set up a flight plan manually and also looked at the different options of the gns 430 in combination with the dc6 but keep in mind they are also applicable to other aircrafts which have the gns 430 from garmin hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or comments then feel free to post them in the comment box below and if you want to stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then consider subscribing to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time